The coronavirus pandemic has slowed down activities in the country. The doom and gloom narrative about healthcare and the economy is not the only story to tell. Bwana waziri amesema kila pahali ambapo ni kama duka ama pali pali popote ambayo ni wafanyi biashara wanafanya biashara ifungwe. Sasa kwa si, mimi saa hii ofisi yangu hata nimefunga. As a resilient people, we have shown the will to pick up and rise above our challenges to regain our footing and restore normalcy. Having the bounce does not mean that we don't struggle, make mistakes or need to ask for help. As a buoyant and hopeful people, we must keep plugging along even when the situation becomes ugly or exhausting. This is what defines us as Kenyans. Kenya, 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 no nyumba ni kwetu. Upendo na amani, amani no mila yetu. Najivunia, naipenda Kenya yetu. Milele daima, nitaitunza Kenya yetu. Heshima kwa walo tupigania, Kenya leo tuahishi kwa fura. Mashuja tunaujivunia. In the spirit of Pamoja to Songe Mbele, Madaraka Day reminds us of the day our country attained internal self rule in 1963 and is more than about heroes or statesmen. It is in regard to more. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the happiest days of my life. Mze Jomo Kenyatta led the nascent country from mid-1963, initially as Prime Minister and later President, until his death in 1978, an era commended for the relative political stability. If I have done mistake to you, it's for you to forgive me. If you have done to me, I say, it's for me to forgive you. I think some of you have been maybe worried what will happen if Kenyatta comes to be the head of the government. <laughs> he has been imprisoned. Maybe he has been given trouble. Well now, let me set you to rest that Kenyatta had no intention whatsoever to look backward. We are not going to look backward. We are going to forgive the past. His presidency effected real change in the country, politically, socially and economically. Throughout Kenyatta's tenure as president, he initiated significant constitutional reforms, established the path for Kenya's economic socialist future, and worked to desegregate a stratified country into the dream of Uhuru. During this era, international commentators touted Kenya as a successful development model of growth in the periphery with useful lessons for the rest of the developing world. Katika ulimwengu huu, kuna wengi ambao wana macho lakini kuona hawaoni. Na mimi na waambia wale ambao wako na macho, waangalie si mbali. Lakini waangalie katika muji wa Nairobi Waone vile maendeleo uh, inakuendelea 
Hapa hapa tulipo kiangalia nyuma yenu mnaona manyumba ambao wakati wa utawala wa beberu haiku wako ukiangalia mbele yenu huko utaona vile vile mambo ambayo hayaku wako wakati wa utawala wa beberu na mimi nasema kwamba ukiwa na mambo kama hayo tunaonyesha ulimwengu mzima kwamba sisi tulikuwa tuna hitaji tulikuwa na kiu ya kuwa watu huru with an average annual economic growth rate of more than 5% and a relatively high per capita income when compared to other emerging and developing countries the west generally praised kenya as one of the few economic and political ornaments to be held up admired and analyzed mainly in order to detect what might be transferable from its exceptional performance some argued that kenya had followed a relatively free market economy compared to its neighbors others attributed this success to a generally stable political system the kenya debate occasioned robust discussion on relations between development indigenous capital and state society relations in developing countries na mifugo yetu harambe By the time of Mzee Jomo Kenyatta's death on August the 22nd 1978 the Kenyan economy had achieved a resonant boom in GDP Mzee Kenyatta was succeeded on October the 14th 1978 by President Daniel Arap Moi who remained president until 2002 Mimi Daniel Droidich Arab Moi na hapa kwamba nitakuwa mwaminifu kwa jamhuri ya Kenya na kuitumikia kwa moyo wangu wote na kwamba nitahifadhi nitalinda na kuitetea katiba ya Kenya kwa mujibu wa sheria iliyowekwa Ewe Mwenyezi Mungu nisaidie The initial 10 years of Daniel Arap Moi's administration saw the solidification of the single party system within the constitution. Until a combination of internal and external pressures resulted in more democratic processes in 1992. I am glad to inform Kenyans that I have today ascended to the bills as a sign of my commitment to political reforms. When the elections are called, I urge all contestants to ensure that they conduct their campaign in a mature and peaceful mana Along with diffusing political tensions through the cabinet retention President Moi practiced reconciliation forgiveness and tolerance with political adversaries including the release of political detainees in 1978 on the 15th anniversary of independence Kenya has a great future but this will not come on its own it will require the dedication and commitment of each one of us but above all the cornerstone of our future progress must continue to be a national unit Moi continued to consolidate support and steer the country 
under the Nyayo philosophy which advocated for peace, love, and unity. Between 1982 and 1984, Kenya experienced a myriad of challenges, key among them drought that necessitated the importation of grain. On these dark days, Kenyans undeniably stuck together, showing great unity, hope, and resilience. Moyes' era ushered in gains that cut across all social economic areas, most notably in agriculture, where coffee and tea dominated exports, the education and industrialization sectors also recording exponential growth. <laughs> Regardless of the political and economic struggles experienced during this era, the return of multi-party democracy in 1991 led to the expansion of space for the enjoyment of civil and political freedoms. It enhanced the capacity for participatory democracy. We get perfect leadership that um, looks at what everyone really wants. If we get leadership that is inclusive, that doesn't just want to look at one side, you know, of their gain. And if we deal with all issues like land issues, and we just look at what everybody really wants in the whole country, and that way we won't have a split, we won't have people feeling like maybe a certain tribe is represented, another one is not represented, and so on. In life, between persons, the most important thing is not that you hit the other fellow and knock him down. It is rather that you come to understand each other, that you speak to him, you try and persuade him, because then he'll become your friend and you, you, you cooperate. Mimi Mwai Kibaki na hapa kwamba nitakuwa mwaminifu wa Jamhuri ya Kenya na kuitumikia kwa moyo wangu wote na kwamba nitahifadhi nitailinda na kuitetea katiba ya Kenya kwa mujibu wa sheria iliyowekwa ewe Mwenyezi Mungu nisaidie Between 2003 and 2004, the new government, under the leadership of President Mwai Kibaki, enacted legislation to promote freedoms, basic human rights, and to strengthen the fight against corruption. We need to see uh, the, the institutions that are created to fight corruption actually working. We want to see people being arraigned in court, for instance, and charged. And some people should need to be uh, taken to prison to serve as an example. They are supposed to follow chapter 6 of the constitution. You see chapter 6 of the constitution, nobody wants to look at that page. And that is where we have got leadership and integrity. If corruption cannot work, go along together with integrity. It was during this era that the Universal Free Primary Education Enrollment Program began increasing the number of children accessing basic education. Major infrastructure projects were also undertaken during this period, opening up the country to more economic possibilities and investments. We'll now wave it to all of us as the fanfare is being played. The Constitution of Kenya 2010 fundamentally restructured governance through a bicameral legislature and devolved governance. 
as we commemorate 57 years of internal self-rule today, Kenya has come full circle by living up to the promise and the dream of our country's founding fathers with regard to prosperity, fairness, and dignity for all Kenyans. Wametupa jina madaraka tuwapongeze kwa makofi. Ai Uhuru Kenyatta. These are the same ideals that His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta has sought to inculcate in national ethos that promote nationhood, patriotism, commonality, shared beliefs and aspirations that go beyond having a residency in our country. Our country has undergone the most consequential transformation since the dawn of our republic by ushering in a new constitutional order as well as successfully implementing a devolved structure of governance and we continue as a people to make steady progress in areas of education, healthcare, food security, nutrition, infrastructure, renewable energy, defense and security, industrialization, amongst many others. Despite the recent challenges, Kenya's economy continues to thrive with the current expansion being boosted by a stable macroeconomic environment, positive investor confidence, and a vibrant services sector. This growth is also being driven by the ongoing key investments aimed at supporting the implementation of the Big Four development agenda. In December 2017, President Kenyatta outlined the Big Four development priority areas that aim at ensuring Kenyans have decent and affordable housing, access to quality and affordable health care, food security, as well as enhancement of the manufacturing sector. A notable progress under the Universal Health Coverage Pillar is the Linda Mama Program, where mothers access maternity services in all public hospitals free of charge. <laughs> Tunaona Linda Mama inatufanya vizuri kwa sababu wakati wa mwingine mbele ni tulikuwa tunajiripia si mwenyewe. Na hizo hizo pesa tulikuwa tunalipa silikuwa mingi sana. Si ate kidogo. Na sasa tunaona tukienda kliniki ni bure. Tukikuja huku mataneti ni bure. We are committed to contribute to the president's vision for universal health care by conducting these medical safaris around the country. I'm confident that this initiative 
will enhance the government's agenda for universal health care by providing access to all Kenyans. We have committed to leave no one behind. Various housing projects have also been implemented under the affordable housing pillar. The Big Four agenda not only targets to offer better services to Mwananchi, but to also create employment opportunities for thousands of Kenyans. Increased investment in the education sector has provided more young people with opportunities to get education through both the free primary and free day secondary enrollment program. The government has been collaborating with all stakeholders to achieve a 100% transition from primary to secondary school over the last two years, as well as investments in technical vocational education and training institutes to guarantee that all children who go through secondary education have a chance in higher learning. Kuna watu walo wametegemea tu white collar jobs. Na hizo sa zingine kwa kiakili ya ujatimu hapo. Hizi kazi za technical ziko very important. Juu kama mimi nimesomea hata ususi. Hata nikikosa construction naweza jitegemea kimaisha. Maybe after I finish I may want to come back to school to continue to choose another course maybe in another class and I continue learning more the parents will be happy the government has also put in place various measures across the country to make certain that the youth are fully involved in the country's development agenda Kenya has recorded rapid growth in infrastructure development. And if you have been to Mombasa in the last two years, chances are you have used the Madaraka Express, Kenya's new train service. A project that transitioned Kenya from the old colonial rail service and that has provided the essential link from the port of Mombasa to the hinterland, thus improving efficiency in both cargo and passenger transport services. Nilitumia gali ya kitambo, gali ya moto ya kitambo, nilitumia 1984. Kwa natofauti sana kwa sababu ilikuwa slow sana, mtu ilikuwa nakawa wakati mlefu sana kupika uko, pali naenda mpaka usiku kusha. Lakini hii ikona speed sana and very comfortable because it's also clean. Road networks have opened up hitherto inaccessible areas and towns. Investments in the energy sector have not only lit up many homes and schools, but have boosted the manufacturing sector in the country through energy incentives by the government. The tourism sector has evolved considerably over the years, making Kenya one of the top destinations for safari excursions, conference tourism, among others.
As a bastion of peace, our security forces have been in the forefront in ensuring internal and global world peace. Since independence, the Kenyan military has significantly contributed to global peacekeeping missions under the auspices of the United Nations and the African Union. Reforms that cut across all our disciplined forces have seen improved service delivery to Mwananchi. The National Youth Service has also been in the forefront in providing the much-needed technical and vocational training skills to not just prepare young people for the job market, but also to instill the spirit of patriotism and service to the nation. Public service reforms have led to great innovations in bringing services closer to the people with Kenya's Huduma Center services cascaded to many parts of the country. History has been made here in Singapore. Kenya are cup champions. We'll see you all again in a few weeks in Paris. We celebrate the spirit of sportsmanship, which has put our country in the global map over the years and brought us together in a united front on several occasions. We have all experienced proud moments in our sports sector, winning medals and trophies or not. Our patriotism and pride in the Kenyan flag have remained solid over. Kenya has carved a niche for herself in Africa's success stories from its growing youthful population. A dynamic private sector, highly skilled workforce, improved infrastructure and its pivotal role as the gateway to the East African community. It is imperative, therefore, that as Kenyans, we do not lose sight of where we have come from as a nation. Let us strive to be passionate in all our endeavors by doing all that we can to replenish our resilience reservoirs. With millions of people in the world and many businesses on a slowdown, a ripple effect trickling down to the economy is inevitable. Let us be there for each other during these difficult times. Our unity will be key moving forward. We salute all providers of essential services, including healthcare workers and the security personnel, Kenyans of goodwill who are looking out for each other and each one of you for standing in solidarity with fellow Kenyans as we live by the words of our national anthem, Tungane Mikono Pamoja Kazini, Kila siku tuwe na shukrani. Hey, hey,